Italy just did something that looks bureaucratic on paper, but strategically it is anything but. On January 5th, 2026, Rome published a prior information notice in the EU's official journal, effectively opening the procurement pathway for two next-generation air defense destroyers. And the timing matters because the planned start of the negotiated procurement procedure is February 18th, 2026, with an overall budget envelope of roughly 2.7 billion euros, excluding Viet. That is not a routine modernization line item. That is a declaration that Italy intends to keep a seat at the top table of naval air defense inside NATO for decades. The question is, why commit to high-end destroyers now, and what does this reveal about the threats Italy thinks it will face at sea? Start with the obvious problem Italy is trying to solve. The two Durand de la Penne class ships, Durand de la Penne and Francesco Mimbelli, entered service in the early 1990s. They have done their job for more than three decades, including upgrades and by naval standards, that is a respectable lifespan. But warship design is not just about how long the steel survives. It is about whether the ship still has growth margin for new sensors, more missiles, more power-hungry electronics, and new defensive layers against threats that did not exist when the ship was conceived. When planners say the sensor architecture, missile capacity, and growth margins are no longer sufficient, that is a polite way of saying the ship is running out of future. And in 2026, future is defined by saturation rates, low-flying cruise missiles, increasingly autonomous drones, and the brutal reality that a few seconds of reaction time can be the difference between a defended task group and a burning wreck. Now here is the key nuance. This is not a program that started yesterday. The DDX routes go back to a December 15, 2021 contract awarded to Horizonte Sistemi Navali for risk reduction activities and design definition. That contract split into a feasibility phase and a project definition phase intended to consolidate requirements and validate technical solutions. In other words, Italy has been shaping this ship for years before taking the visible step of formal procurement. And that matters because modern air defense destroyers are not big frigates. They are complex systems of systems. Their value is not in the hull. It is in sensors, combat management, electronic warfare, missiles, launchers, data links, and the integration that makes all of that respond as one organism. If you rush the design definition, you pay for it later in delays, cost growth, and a ship that never quite becomes what it was supposed to be. That also explains why Italy is leaning toward a negotiated procedure rather than a classic open competition. Open source documentation frames DDX as an evolution based on the FREM evolution baseline currently under construction, itself derived from the in-service FREM multi-purpose frigates. And Horizonte Sistemi Navali, bringing together Fincantieri and Leonardo, is described as holding the relevant industrial know-how and intellectual property rights. Translation? Italy is buying down integration risk by sticking with a familiar industrial ecosystem and a known design lineage. You can debate whether that reduces competitive pressure on price, but the strategic logic is hard to miss. When the replacement clock is ticking and the threat environment is accelerating, schedule certainty and system integration can become more valuable than theoretical savings from a wider tender. The real question becomes, do you want the cheapest destroyer on paper or the destroyer that actually arrives on time, works as advertised, and can be upgraded for the next 30 years? And that 30 years point is not rhetorical. The notice explicitly frames the effort as more than hull construction, including through life support, system upgrades, and technology evolution across the ship's entire service life. That is a quiet revolution in procurement philosophy. Instead of treating sustainment and modernization as afterthoughts, Italy is building them into the program from the start. Why? because the pace of change in sensors, electronic warfare, and unmanned threats will force continuous adaptation. A destroyer that cannot evolve becomes obsolete long before it reaches the end of its mechanical lifespan. In a world where a drone swarm can be assembled faster than a ship can be refitted, design for upgrades is not a luxury feature. It is the difference between relevance and irrelevance. So what kind of ship is DDX expected to be? On current projections, it is not subtle. Around 175 meters in length, about 24 meters beam, roughly 9 meters draft, with a crew above 300. That places it among the largest surface combatants Italy has ever operated. The propulsion concept is projected as Kodogl, combining diesel engines, gas turbines, and electric propulsion, aiming for both high-speed performance above 30 knots and efficient, quieter cruising. That combination is a tell. Italy is not building a coastal security ship. It is building a fleet unit designed to sprint with task groups, to stay on station, to operate with acoustic discretion when needed, and to generate the electrical power modern sensors and combat systems demand. But size and speed are secondary. The center of gravity is air defense. 
The expectation is six eight-cell vertical launch system modules for up to 48 Aster surface-to-air missiles. That number is not just a statistic, it is a statement about how Italy sees naval combat evolving. If you believe the primary danger is a single silver bullet missile, you do not design around depth of magazines. If you believe the danger is a saturation problem, multiple inbound weapons, decoys, drones, and coordinated timing, then missile capacity becomes your oxygen supply, and 48 interceptors is not infinite, but it is a meaningful leap in the ability to keep fighting through repeated raids, protect high-value units, and provide area coverage for an entire group. Then comes the part that shifts DDX from shield to sword. Italian officials have previously signaled interest in adding a land attack capability, potentially via a navalized scalp cruise missile or the Teseo MK2 slash evolved, which offers anti-ship and littoral strike functions. Even the possibility matters strategically. It means these destroyers are not just about defending the fleet, they are about giving Italy sovereign options for precision strike from the sea. In the Mediterranean, where distances are short and political timelines are shorter, a maritime strike option changes the calculus of deterrence. It also changes the value of the ship inside NATO. An air defense command platform that can also contribute meaningful strike effects is not merely an escort, it is an operational tool. And DDX is clearly meant to be more than an air defense missile truck. Aviation facilities are expected to support sustained helicopter operations with a rear flight deck and hangar sized for two EH-101 or two SH-90 naval helicopters. That turns the destroyer into a flexible node for anti-submarine warfare, maritime security over the horizon, targeting logistics and command and control. In practical terms, it allows the ship to extend its sensor reach, project presence, and keep options open when the mission shifts from high-end deterrence to messy real-world operations, evacuations, embargo enforcement, escorting commercial traffic, or supporting amphibious groups. Because the Mediterranean is not a single problem, it is a spectrum of problems, and the ship that can move across that spectrum without being reconfigured at the dock is the ship that stays useful. All of this leads to the strategic why now. Italy is reinforcing a top-tier escort layer at a moment of renewed maritime competition, and it is doing so in a way that keeps it interoperable with NATO partners. The mention of Italy's role as a framework nation in NATO maritime task groups is not decorative. A framework nation needs credible command platforms, robust air defense, and the sensors and links to integrate with allied ships and aircraft. If Italy wants to lead, it cannot show up with ships that are merely adequate. It must show up with ships that can carry the air defense burden, absorb the first shock of a raid, and still have the magazine depth to keep the formation alive. Finally, there is a longer timeline buried inside this procurement. Planning documents for 2025-2027 suggest these first two units are only an opening phase, with additional ships envisaged longer term, eventually to succeed the Andrea Doria-class destroyers and sustain high-end surface warfare capability into the 2030S and beyond. That means DDX is not just a replacement, it is an architecture choice. Once you commit to a class, you commit to its sensors, its missiles, its industrial base, and its upgrade path. And that brings us to the last question. When Italy locks in this path, is it merely keeping pace with the threat or is it positioning itself to shape the balance of naval power in its neighborhood? If the February 18th, 2026 procurement launch proceeds as planned, we are not watching a paperwork milestone. We are watching Italy set the terms of its maritime relevance for the next generation.